I'm Colby Jubenville, and I'd like to welcome you to the campus of Middle Tennessee State University and the Center for Student Coaching and Success. The vision of the Center for Student Coaching and Success is to help MTSU students become gainfully employed in their chosen career path prior to walking across the stage at graduation. You know, success is a word that we constantly hear and that is now a constant on a uh, college campus. And I think it's important that we are very intentional about the success that we're trying to create within this center. And so if you look at the typical definition of success, if you look at some of the typical definitions of success, you may find some of the following. To pick yourself up off the ground just one more time, athletes know that definition. The continued expansion of happiness, the setting and achieving of worthy goals. These are all typical definitions that we hear when we talk about success. The best definition of success that I've heard and that when I heard it, I thought this needs to be part of an academic footprint to address, to address the challenging gap between approaching graduation, graduation and securing gainful employment. It's the Rose definition of success. And if you come to our center and you walk through our door into the main entrance, you will see this quote and the Rose definition of success is to advance confidently in the direction of your own dream and to endeavor to live a life that only you can imagine where you will find uncommon success in common hour. And so the reason that I share that with you today is this uncommon success in common hour, I think is unfolding as we put the programming of the five to arrive together, the foundation of the five to arrive is a model that I've created that's focused on helping students speed up the adoption and retention of market specific knowledge. You see, it's how we, how we process, how we absorb information that ultimately is the starting point for how we separate ourselves from others. It's how we adopt and retain information that ultimately is the starting place for how we separate ourselves from others in this thing called the marketplace of ideas, which is the new economy that we live in. And so you've clicked on this podcast, you've clicked on this link, and hopefully you see the model itself, the self-directed, self-selected coaching model. And ultimately, this model is not only a model that speeds up the adoption and retention of market-specific knowledge, it's also a model that, if used properly, will allow students to become self-directed in the discovery of that market-specific knowledge. And so what I'd like to do is go through the model with you step by step so that you may be able to take notes and understand um, this process. Because once you understand this, and it does take time, but once you understand this, then you'll start to see just how powerful technology can be and just how easy it is to become self-directed in how you adopt and retain and acquire information. So, I tried to make this as easy as possible because I think that simplicity itself, simplicity, is what makes things better. And so if you look at this model, you'll notice that just right down the middle, there's two lines that separate three words, two lines that separate three words. Those three words are innovation reality, and hard work. Innovation, reality, and hard work. 
innovation, innovation in the context of the model means you go first. And so you say to yourself, well, I go first where? Well, you go first to the market specific knowledge that will allow you to separate yourself from others. Innovation means you go first. And so instead of the typical approach of overwhelming students with large sterile textbooks and 60 to 70 slide PowerPoints, I've tried to take a different approach that makes them active participants in this process. You see, I think that each class that they decide to take should have core concepts and theories. Those concepts and theories ultimately allow students to create frameworks for themselves. Concepts are big picture ideas. Theories are those big picture ideas that have been tested and proven to be true or not true. Concepts are big picture, big picture ideas and theories are ideas that have been tested to be proven true or not true. Deming, W. Deming, the father of modern statistics, said this. He said, without theory, there are no questions, and without questions, there is no learning. And so this model is built to first teach students to understand that they need to focus on key concepts and theories in each class that they choose to take. Those concepts and theories provide frameworks that allow the student to create predictability, structure, and efficiency in how they ultimately solve problems and make decisions. And as this unfolds, I'll be able to give you some examples along the way. Let me just give you one example of a framework that comes from a theory and that comes from a concept. Let's say that we're talking about in management. I teach classes in sport management, which is what my background is. But let's say that one of the challenges that someone faces is the engagement of people. How can we get our people to produce greater results? And so a framework that might come from the study of different theories of motivation and different concepts related to motivation, a framework that they might see in this process would be that people typically have four universal needs. Those four typical or four universal needs are opportunities to learn, grow in responsibility, contribute to others, and be recognized. Those come straight from several pieces related to several different theories of motivation. So the model is first built to get students to recognize what are those core concepts and what are those core theories related to the class that they've decided to take. Then how can they take those and through a process of discovery create frameworks that allow them to create predictability, structure, and efficiency in how they ultimately solve problems and make decisions. Once they decide on those frameworks and how they want to bring those theories to life, then they're able to go to Google and find a podcast, an article, a video, or a blog related to those theories or frameworks. That's where the market specific knowledge is. Tell me about the podcast, the article, the video, the blog that you found 
Where does it come from? How is it able to help you create market specific knowledge? And then if you'll see at the very bottom of that first phase of innovation, which means you go first, you go first to direct yourself to the market specific knowledge that you need to be successful in your chosen career path where you ultimately want to be gainfully employed, there are two questions that I believe turn learning into action. The first question is why is this information important to me? The second question is what am I going to do with the information to drive my business or life forward? To me, those are the two questions that turn learning into action. So it's concepts and theories that direct themselves to think about frameworks that provide predictability, structure, and efficiency to help them think about how to ultimately solve problems and make decisions that lead them to articles, blog, video, podcasts that give them market-specific knowledge and the filter for that podcast, article, video, blog. The filter is why is the information important to them and how will they use the information? What am I going to do with this information to drive my business or my life forward? That's the first phase of innovation, which means you go first. You go first towards the market specific knowledge. This is how we speed up the adoption and retention of market specific knowledge. The second phase, the second phase of the model is called reality. And it's called reality simply because I believe this is the reality that we all face should we decide to lead people or manage resources. Here's what we know when we lead people and manage resources. We wake up every day and we're asked to solve problems and make decisions. And how we solve those problems and make those decisions to find the results that we're all judged by. Managers, are judged by results. Those results ultimately define whether we move up in our careers, down in our careers, and that's either being employed by ourselves or being employed through others, or stay right where we are. And this phenomenon of staying right where we are is called the Peter Principle. And the Peter Principle is this idea that we all rise to our highest level of incompetence and that's where we stay. Now when I first talk to students about this, one of the things that's interesting is that they believe it, it's we all rise to our highest level of potential and that's where we stay. The more that, that I spend time coaching others, we all reach this ceiling, this challenge, this place in our career where we can't see past it. And if we can't see past that, this is the highest level of incompetence. I believe that truly the only way you can break through this level of incompetence is through coaching. It's through some kind of systematic coaching where you receive feedback, where ultimately someone can help you see either because you don't know you don't see it yourself, or you're not sure how to do it. Leaders who lead people, managers who manage resources are asked every day to solve problems and make decisions. How they decide to solve those problems and make those decisions to find the results that they create for the organization and themselves. It's what their career is known for. It's called their reputation. 
And that ultimately defines whether they move up, down, or stay right where they are. And right where you are is this phenomenon called the Peter Principle. This is reality.